This episode of Scam Nation is sponsored by Audible. Thank you, Audible. Even the most experienced magicians oftentimes have little tells that reveal what object they're hiding in their hands. I'm gonna show you three classic palming techniques and we'll see if you can figure out what object I'm hiding. Palm version A. Palm version B. And palm version C. Each time I was hiding either a card, a coin, or a matchbox. See if you can figure out which one is which. Here they are again. All right, you got your pick? Pause the video now, lock in your choices, and send me a response. Get ready for the answer, but first, we gotta talk about our friends over at Audible. Anybody who knows me knows that I will not shut up about how much I love Audible. I'm coming up on 10 years now of the Platinum program. That's two books a month, and I still have to buy more credits because I'm taking all of those moments of latent bandwidth when I'm taking out the garbage or commuting from one place to the other. All those moments are moments you can be transported to other worlds. You can expand your horizons. You can learn. Head on over to audible.com slash scam nation. Sign up for a 30-day trial and get this. You will get an audiobook of your choosing that you get to keep forever plus two audio. Audible Originals. And of course, if you're a fan of Scam Nation, then you watch that legendary interview between me and one of my heroes in magic, Nate Staniforth, whose brilliant book, Here is Real Magic, is finally available in audiobook format. It's great, it's a riveting story. If you're a magician, an aspiring magician, if you're somebody who started something because you love it and ever had that moment of doubt that you needed to reevaluate and say, why am I doing this? This book is for you, it's for everybody, not just for magicians. Hit up audible.com slash scam nation or text the word scam nation to 500, 500 which sounds scammy, but it's not. Get that free audiobook, get those two originals, but most importantly, keep us expanding and growing here at Scam Nation, just like you'll be expanding and growing your mind. Tied it all together, did it, nailed it. Now before we go any farther, you should know that everything I'm about to say is stolen from the genius mind of Michael Amar, who wrote a fantastic essay called The Natural Lay of the Hand. But I know what you wanna know. You wanna know if you were right. Guess what, you're probably right. So the first one, palm version A, was a classically palmed coin. Why did you know that? It's telltale signs. Like for example, nobody holds their hand with these fingers splayed like that. The reason I'm doing it is so I can pinch together this flesh and keep this thing right where I want it. Also notice the telltale fish hook of this thumb. If you ever see somebody doing this, they are palming a coin. They are keeping it between these fleshy pads and they look like they're about to cast some kind of bizarre spell. And not a good kind, a bad kind of spell. Palm version B, a matchbook in finger palm position. Why were you able to tell this? Well, first of all, for some reason, last time my fingers were splayed, this time they're all like a block, except for these two, I'm doing like some good devil horns thing. Unless I'm having tea with the queen, I don't need to have this pinky out. Everything about this screams, there's something large being pinched by these two fingers. Also, telltale fish hook on that thumb. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. And finally, palming version C, of course, is the playing card. Why? Because I've created a square-like block out of my hand. I'm also holding it totally straight, which is something nobody does. But I'm doing it because I wanna have one point of contact on that pinky, another one on the fleshy pad of my thumb, and I wanna keep it with only those two points of contact and keep everything else straight. Why? Because I can, because obviously, how could I possibly have an object concealed with my hand so straight, said nobody ever. All right, so what's the problem with these palms? I mean, you weren't able to see the object, right? But there were little aspects that telegraphed that something was unnatural. Now, Michael Amar realized that you can't look to other magicians to figure out how they're holding their hands because they know what they're hiding. And at some unconscious level, you're gonna telegraph all of that. So instead, he looked to the works of Michelangelo. Take the Sistine Chapel, look at the right hand of Ezekiel. He's got nothing in his hand, nothing to deceive, nothing to hide. How does he hold it? Not anything close to the way I was holding my hand. Look at the way he carved out the hands in the statue of David. Heck man, look at the moment that Adam reaches forward and touches the finger of God. What do you notice? You notice that the natural way for hands to be resting is in this gently curved position. It's not that you're pointing, but your index finger is farther forward than your pinky and your thumb most certainly is not fish hooked out. If you have these tells, how can you adjust the way you palm cards, coins, or any kind of object and not have it be revealed? The answer, of course, is get as close as you can to that Michelangelo position. So just relax your hands. What do you notice? It's like you're almost kind of holding onto a pair of handlebars. When everything's relaxed, then you're gonna have to figure out a new place to settle everything. So how do we fix this? 
Well, when we first learn to palm coins, we stick them in the center of our hands, we squinch everything up to the best of our ability, giving us those splayed fingers and that fish hook thumb. So instead, let's start with the Michelangelo hand, totally relaxed. And then we'll figure out where does the coin naturally want to stay. And by not moving that hand, by keeping everything truly relaxed, you're able to figure out multiple palm to positions, none of which telegraph the fact that you're holding onto a coin. The finger palm matchbox has a different set of problems. In this case, you only need the two middle fingers to keep it palmed. Because these are the only two you need to use, there's a temptation to leave the rest extended as if to prove something, but it doesn't. It just proves that you're using these to pinch something there. So what do we do? Guess what, same thing. We adopt that Michelangelo hand pose and we figure out what feels most natural. Now in this case, it's gonna be terrifying. You're gonna think that it looks like you're clenching something in your hands, but the truth is the relaxed hand is already a natural fit for finger palming. If you're worried about being busted, just make sure to hold something in your hand. That's why magicians use magic wands, is it gives them an object to justify palming even the biggest objects. Build the story around it, but make sure it looks natural, not like you're freaking at a Metallica concert. The card is my favorite example because it forces us to ask the question, why? When you first learn how to palm a card, oftentimes you just shove it in your hand and you just do this. You bend up the card like crazy and then you sneak it back into the deck and of course it's popped right up. Everyone can tell something weird happened with that. And we as magicians become so allergic to that that we adopt this weird otherworldly karate chop posture because we want to keep the card totally straight. We want to have just two points of contact in there. But the problem is that we look like we're doing the robot at all times, not natural. So instead, what do we do? You guessed it. We adopt that Michelangelo hand position and we figure out how to adjust our palm to make it fit. And in this case, yes, there's gonna be more bend to the card, but as a magician, you know that story supersedes slights. Because you have story on your side, once you replace the card, you don't let everybody see that it's bent on top. Instead, you figure out a reason, a justifiable action to give the cards a riffle, and all of a sudden, you can never tell that it was bent to begin with. Now keep in mind, everybody's hands are different sizes, everybody's got different level of comfort, everybody has different angles they're performing under. For me, once I get a one-handed top palm on there, and I know I have it locked in between these two spots, I just don't worry about it. I relax my hand completely, I let there be a curve, and I know that I have plenty of time to flatten the card out in the story. Two things, first of all, everybody should read that essay by Michael Amar, The Natural Lay of the Hand. Second of all, I wanna see how you're doing. Send me a before and after, your natural way of palming things, and then whether or not this helped out at all. I'm always on Twitter, or of course you can write us at scamnationshow at gmail.com.